All right, so I've drawn an overhead view of a car. I think the tires are pretty obvious. These are the seats, steering wheel. I drew it with three pedals because I know some people are gonna give me a thumbs down for drawing an automatic. The uh, green components are brake system parts. These are calipers and that's the brake master cylinder. Traditionally, a car didn't have an ABS unit, so we'd get lines coming out like this and that for the front like that for the rear. Sometimes you wouldn't have the split here, it would be up here and you'd have long lines coming to the back. But this is a simplified version and you would go about this by bleeding this one first, this one second, this one third, and then this one fourth. This is an old rule of thumb system and it's assuming the layout of the brake lines. We don't even have to get into very complicated brake systems before we run into a problem here. What if the manufacturer decided to run the brake lines along the passenger side of the vehicle. Now the furthest wheel from the master cylinder when you follow this path is actually this wheel, even though this wheel is physically closer to the master cylinder. This wheel ends up with this much more brake line than this wheel does. So on this system you'd bleed it one, two, three, four. All right, now let's work with a car that has an anti-lock brake system on it. This will have an ABS unit, but where is it going to be located? Let's assume with this car that it's an import and where the domestic market is, the driver's side is on this side. And they'll build the car with the steering wheel and the pedals on this side. And because the master cylinder is over here, it makes sense to have the ABS unit right here. However, when making it for the US market, they'll move the steering wheel and everything over here, but they already have the mount for the ABS unit over here, so it stays here. So now we get brake lines heading to the ABS unit, and then coming out of this ABS unit is a brake line this way, brake line this way, and then we'll assume this goes down the middle. Now we've got these even length lines that cancel each other out, so we'll start with this being basically where the master cylinder is on our assumption of which line is the longest. This one right here is obviously the shortest. This is the second shortest. Our longest one is here, so we'll start with that one. Head over here for two, three, and then four. So I just showed you three different brake line layouts and all three of them had different orders for bleeding the brakes. The order you bleed the brakes in does matter because if there's any little air bubbles trapped in the system, doing it in the right order is gonna give you the best chance of getting those bubbles out. I actually own a car that uses this layout that you're looking at right now. Here's the brake master cylinder and way over here is the ABS unit. If you're not sure what the brake line layout of your car is, you can usually find it online. Look up your year, make, and model and brake bleeding order or look up the year, make, and model and brake line layout. Your best option is always to get data from the manufacturer, but sometimes that can be hard to get if you don't work at a mechanic shop. I know this isn't as easy as the old school method that everyone was taught, but hopefully this made bleeding your brakes the right way a little bit easier. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next Car Simplified video.